In this recording, we're going to talk about the simple but very powerful concept of linking resources to an HTML page. So first we have to talk a little bit about how web pages work in general. And I want you to understand the difference between embedded and compiled content. Hopefully this will, will help make the concept clearer in terms of what we need to do when we're linking HTML files. So uh, a typical word processed file is an example of embedded content. What that means is when you have an external resource like an image, it's actually added to the file, becomes part of it. Multiple files are bound together into that single, in this case, uh, the example we're using, a single doc or docx file. The file may, may remain editable or become flattened. So think about it this way. If you have a Word file, you, you dump in a bunch of images into it, different, you know, maybe link to an Excel spreadsheet, whatever. All those things, a copy of those is created in Word and sometimes multiple copies. I don't know if you realize this, but if you put an image in a Word page and then you resize it, Word actually saves a, an original version of the file as well as a resized version of the file. Same thing if you crop an image inside of Word. It keeps a cropped copy as well as the entire original file. So when you open that file back up in Word, you can manipulate those images, move them around, even, even um, re-crop them in a different way. That's editable. If you were to take that page and save it as a PDF, that's an example of a flattened file. Basically, it's just putting everything into a single set format so that you, you can't edit individual pieces of it anymore. It, you know, that actually is a way of reducing the file size. When you see things being optimized, that's sometimes flattening is what is, is happening to optimize, optimize those files. Um, and basically it's becoming one static unit instead of a dynamic editable unit. So that's, that is what's happening when you're, when you're doing word processing. And that is why the file size increases and can increase just dramatically when you start putting content, embedding content into something like a word page. There's lots of content that's being packaged together. And as I mentioned, sometimes even multiple copies of a resource are being saved within that file. HTML works differently. It's what's called compiled content. So in this case, external resources remain external. That image always remains a separate distinct file. That CSS style sheet, which we'll, we'll learn how to make some external style sheets in this class, remains a separate file. The HTML file itself is a, is a standalone piece. And instead of bringing everything into that HTML file, it simply contains the pointers, and those are, those are designated by the arrows in the diagram, pointers that say where an external resource is located. So what happens in this case is that multiple files are processed by a compiler to render the finished product. And when we're talking HTML, the compiler is just a web browser. So the web browser understands the HTML codes for linking that it's got to go out and find these other resources and display them at the point that is indicated by the code. So that's what the browser is doing. It's actually doing that work of looking for all those external pieces and displaying them as it's supposed to at the appropriate time in the code. And that's the process of rendering. So that means the organization of your resources is very important. You've got to know where things are located and be able to point to them correctly so that your page will render properly. It also means, and, and I think you can understand why, when people were first designing uh, the internet, they went with a compiled versus an embedded solution because the file size remains very small. And most of you are probably too young to remember the old days of dial-up modem, but file size was extremely important because we didn't have all these fast speeds that we have today. So you wanted to keep those files as small as possible. And so HTML files can remain very, very small because they're not containing all of these other resources. They're simply pointing to them. And the resources themselves, well, their file size is constant and predictable, not like in, in, in an embedded page where if you um, transform a, a resource within the file, you could be exponentially increasing the file size 
because of those external resources and the different copies that are being created, all that. So the file sizes are constant and predictable for your external resources and for your HTML. This file size is very small and it's, it's an efficient way to put that content together. So that's why HTML functions in a compiled way. Um, and in some senses, it may seem harder as you're learning coding, but, but eventually I think you'll see the real efficiencies that you gain by having this compiled solution. When you're creating links, you need a couple of things. First, you need something to link to that is called the hyperlink reference or address. And that would be, uh, you know, the very recognizable if you're looking at a website, for example, as an external link you want to link to. It's the URL up in the address bar. That would be the href in this case. You also need something on your HTML page that will be linked, and that is called the anchor. So here, if this is your HTML page, you have that underlying text. That's the link that's actually seen by the user that they would click on. And when they click on that, it's going to take them to this address. Now, if you were to look under the hood and take a look at the code of this, um, of this HTML page, you'd see something like this. So it has an HTML tag that includes the URL right? And it's got the complete URL there. And then you can see the tag ends, the, the beginning of the tag ends, and then you see the words linked text that actually render on the page. And then the end of that um, anchor, uh, anchor tag, the A tag, uh, that, that then creates the complete link that is seen. And we'll get into the actual coding of, of links a little bit later. But that those are the ingredients that you need and you always must have those things. You must have something to link to and then you must have something on your page that's going to be linked. And sometimes it's not something that the user sees. We'll see some different types of links that go in the head of your page sometimes. But you definitely need both of those components in order for a link to work. And then finally, just to finish out this overview of linking in HTML, I just want to introduce the concept of different types of links and then we'll explore them uh, in more detail later on. So you can have external links and those are links to content or resources outside of your website. So typically the href value, the hyperlink reference value for those links, we'll start with that HTTP or HTTPS, right? And those are things that are outside of what you've done. Then you also have referential links. Now, these are the ones that link to resources within your website. It is best practice to use a referential href address for these resources. And again, we're, we're going to talk about that in more detail in the next video, uh, but you'll see that that makes your life a lot easier too if you use those referential links within your own website. And then finally, bookmarks. And those are just navigation links within a single page. So these are different types of links that we can, we can accomplish with HTML. And there are different tags uh, for, for doing these, depending on what kind of resource you're linking to and what kind of um, connection you're establishing. So we'll get into the coding. Uh, but just conceptually, keep clear in your mind whether you're talking external referential bookmarks. Um, and then we'll get into some details of each of these types of links in the next video.